Welcome, everyone. It is Saturday afternoon, the first day of fall, and you are, have tuned in to In the Know with the Bullioness. I'm Dawn Marie, a Silver Levels Associate and Top Recruiter here at 7K Metals, and I am here with the fabulous AG Leverage to discuss today's topic, which is entitled Monetary Expansion. Are you on the call, AG? Don, good afternoon and happy Saturday. How are you? I am happy today. It's Saturday. It's a wonderful <laughs> day in Southern California. So first off, our topic of the day is monetary expansion. Can you uh, elaborate what the heck does that mean? So as we mentioned in a previous interview, right now the Fed has placed some liquid cash into the banks, uh, $128 billion uh, between Monday and Tuesday, so that these banks a are able to have money to lend out between themselves, between sovereign countries. Um, it's, it's regarding our treasury bonds themselves. And so the problem with that, well, let's begin from the beginning. Even though it isn't called QE, quantitative easing. In other words, it's not being termed as a printing of dollar bills uh, to, to, that are being influxed into the banks, into the central banks. Um, it, they've given it another term, even though that's not what they're saying, that is in fact what it is. So the last time that we saw this was in 2008. And that's concerning because we know what occurred thereafter. Um, other countries that have done this to date, uh, Venezuela, um, Argentina's in the middle of doing it, certainly uh, Weimar, the Weimar Republic went through this. Now these might seem like exaggerations, but once the money is, is printed and it starts being disseminated, now certainly in the very beginning, it creates business because the banks lend out the money and business is created, construction is started, investment is created, um, people start businesses, opportunity is taken, uh, manufacturing, industrialization, you name it. All of that begins. The problem with creating all that, all that money, though, is that it becomes very, very difficult to handle what happens after that, which is price inflation, monetary inflation, food price inflation, debt default, um, crop shortages, credit stops, especially credit stops. We function in a moment where an 18-wheeler delivers goods from the port into the store based on credit. Um, everything happens on credit. Uh, so in other words, supply chains would break if there is no credit. And so it sounds like a great idea to print money to make the banks solve it. But ultimately, it, it leads to what I call is a perfectly paved road to a Venezuela or a Weimar, because that's exactly what these two countries did to get us to, get us to that one point, to get them to that point. Um, does that make sense, Don? Absolutely. Absolutely. While you were talking, I wanted to segue into some current affairs that are going on this week with presidents. Um, um, visit here to California. I'm currently in California, staying in the West Los Angeles area. And as I was coming up the freeway on the North 101 passing Grand, you look up and there's a whole bunch of tents on the overpass. And it was it just blew me away. The homeless are actually on the overpass, the freeway overpasses. And you know we have a dire homeless situation occurring in California and a whole bunch of proposed solutions that will guarantee our taxes will rise. What's going to be the impact of such things to us? So first and foremost, the, the homeless situation, in California, there is 47% of all the homeless in America live in California. That is a very big number. That is comprised of Los Angeles, San Francisco, Seattle, and other areas in California. What no what no one is talking about is Afghanistan produces 
I'm sorry, $800 billion worth of heroin per year. It is an unbelievable growth of poppies, which produces heroin, which is then which then finds itself to the United States and, and in this case to California. How that's occurring, no one is asking. How that logistics is occurring, no one is asking. The homeless epidemic is being is being um, blamed on the high the high price of housing. Uh, no one is going to deny that the, the the housing prices both on the East Coast and West Coast are are just unbelievably overly high. Also on the high prices of rents and also on the stagnant salaries. Those are the reasons that, that homeless is be, homelessness is being blamed on. Stagnant salaries, high rental prices, and the high price of homes. Now, all those things may, may, may be true, and they are. However, the amount of drugs, readily available affordable drugs out on the streets for a person who may suffer from insecurities, uh, low physical health, uh, who may have excess time on his hands because he or she doesn't work full time. They have a lot of idle time. These people are, are the perfect candidate for drug use, for addiction, um, for at, at the psychological level and at, at the social level, at the, at the mental level, at, at every level. They're just a perfect candidate to become addicted to, to the drugs that are readily available on the street. No one is talking about the it, – it's a real incredible drug abuse problem. Um, the majority of these folks, when interviewed, they're not interested in, in a roof over their head or, or, or a bed. They, they'd rather be in a tent. They'd rather be outside. They'd rather be free. Um, and, and, and no one, none of us is here to judge how somebody wants to live. The problem is that when homeless shelters are built, the beds go widely unslept in, and outside of the perimeter of the homeless shelters, you have a lot of camps. You have a lot of tents. And that's breeding uh, rats, and it's it's inviting diseases that we haven't seen in a very very long time, and it's creating very difficult circumstances for those folks who live at the perimeter of those homeless shelters because now families and businesses are having to contend with folks who have some genuine challenges mentally, um, and and also there's 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 fecal matter and there's a lot of other things that that are occurring, and so again. No one is looking at the drug epidemic that it is. Now, some of the proposed solutions in California at the city levels, at the state levels, at the county levels, is to create homes for these folks and, and, and homes that provide clothing and food and, and counseling and education and, and in some instances even needles so that they can change the drug use from a heroin to a methadone or to a clinician-prescribed medication Nevertheless, the addiction is still there, and a lot of times these folks are also transitioning, at least based on the surveys and statistics, from a homeless shelter into a uh, SRO, a single residence occupancy. This is, th this is about a 300-square-foot area that's still state and county provided. It's still subsidized by the state, but insofar as the surveys now, that person appears on paper as to have successfully transitioned out of the homeless shelter, out of a homeless scenario and into a home, so to speak, in the same manner as that same survey might say that they're now off of an addicted drug like, like heroin, but that same survey will not say that now they're on a, uh, on a doctor-prescribed uh, legal medication. Um, so creating all those programs to help these folks that, that need the help, uh, the only way to do it is to raise the taxes on the working, to raise the taxes on small business, to raise the taxes on small business. And so, and this again ties back to the need for us as individuals to be responsible for our own selves, for our own savings, um, because we already know that we'll be subject to increases of taxes at the city level, the county level, the state level, the local level, the, the federal level then we'd better be prepared. We'd better have some of our personal savings where we can control it, where we can manage it. And, of course, if we know the dollar, even by the Federal Reserve's admission, goes up approximately 2% per inflation. So we know that, according to them, it's going to lose at least 2% buying power per year. Then we'd, we'd best keep it in a form where, at a minimum, it'll preserve its value. And hence the reason why precious metals is, is, is important in a moment like today. 
You know, I'm really glad that you brought this point up because I was ignorant of the fact of the homeless. I didn't quite understand the homeless epidemic connection to addiction. And so I thought it was all based on economy. But this, you just enlightened me right there so much. And I think a lot of people just make that assumption, homeless equals economic issues. But we're talking about addiction, which is going to complicate the economic situation. Don, if I may add one more thing to that. Um, I just mentioned that Afghanistan is an $800 billion per year heroin producing company, so to speak. Before we went into Afghanistan, it was less than an $80 billion producing, uh, heroin producing country. It has gone up more than 10 times and it is disconcerting because some of the same pharmaceutical companies that are here selling prescribed medication, over-the-counter medication, and so forth, are the same ones who are behind some of what's occurring overseas in Afghanistan. So uh, it is it is uh, very very disconcerting to to once once we follow the money and we see where it goes. A lot of times, any one of us can be bold enough and say well, these folks need a job. These folks need to get clean easily, immediately, or readily, or they don't need our empathy or they don't need our sympathy. That isn't the case. I believe they do. But if we were to take a scenario where the the black community some years ago was heavily addicted to crack. Crack cocaine was prevalent in every single black community. It is not the case right now. And if you were to ask, why is it? Did Did they climb out of it? through themselves, through their own motivations, through work, through family, through love, through, through intervention at a, at, a, at a societal level, at the state level, at the county level. Maybe some of that had something to do with it, but primarily what occurred is that the crack cocaine stopped bleeding into these communities. So the same would occur here. The one way to really put a stop to this is to stop the massive amount of cheap, readily available drugs that are making their way out to the streets, we must somehow stop that. Because if a person who mumbles to himself walking down an alley, uh, it it is self-evident that person is disinterested in in work, not interested in buying a home, not not interested in renting a home, much less buying a home. If we know that's the case and, and we quit with the rhetoric of, well, it's solely an economic condition, and we look at it for what it is and we start, uh, we start stopping the influx of, of those drugs into our cities, into our metropolises, into our high rises, into our, into the middle of some of the prettiest cities in the world, San Francisco, Seattle, Los Angeles. These are some of the most beautiful places that America had to offer the world. And so far as, as, um, as modern marvels of cities the world over. Um, and yet they're, they're absolutely ruined and they're rotting from the inside out because of this condition. And unless we speak a little more honestly about what's occurring, we're never going to get to any level of solution. Throwing money at this, at the county level, the state level, and building more homes and more shelters isn't solving the condition. It's not helping the situation. The drugs That's must just putting a Band-Aid on it, right? Absolutely. And, and uh, I, I don't mean to touch up on this, but what it means is that our, that our, that our taxes must, by definition, climb, climb in order to to pay for some of these new programs that are that are coming online, to pay for the existing programs, and to pay for the coming social programs that are being uh, talked about in every city council, along county levels, at the state level. Uh, it's impressive what's being proposed. And so, yes, our taxes will climb. So what do we do as a self-defense mechanism? How do we preserve our savings, our debt? How do we how do we help ourselves in such a circumstance? Uh, again, all this falls back on precious metals. Excellent. And we've got to also realize that we're not helpless. Uh, you know, some of this, as you said, this uh, the awareness is very important. We have these discussions. We're not helpless. Sometimes all this information feels very overwhelming, but um, we can make a difference. We need to go to source instead of just continuing to do this Band-Aid approach and get the answer. And so what, as people, can we do to make a difference? Now more than ever, it's imperative 
that we stay informed. For the longest time, uh, we tend to be a very non-voter, non-participant sort of people within our individual cities. The average city has less than a 5% uh, voter turnout for any council member that they have. And that seems to be the case across the board throughout, and I'm, I'm referring to California primarily, we all need to get involved in our city councils. We need to show up. We need to find out uh, what's at stake, what are some of the latest laws that are on the board, on the agendas of these city councils, what are they looking to do on our behalf, what are they doing with the current money. It turns out that a lot of the local cities are insolvent. A lot of these local cities are unable to pay for their own pensions, and yet a lot of times these very cities are often misusing monies, uh, the, the people's money, in, in ways that the people are simply unaware of because we're, we're uninvolved. So I suggest that we all get more involved, that we become more curious, that we show up to our city council meetings, and that we have a voice, that we step up and speak, that we have opinions. Uh, all these things matter. They empower us, they help us, and they also lead us to truths that are often painful, but they're necessary if, if we want to see change if we want to see good things come out of our communities. In no other way can things happen unless we become involved, unless we become the solutions, unless we look for those solutions from the answers that we ourselves pose. That's what I suggest. And as we go into the first day of fall, it is harvest time. That means the fruit of all of our labors that bounty is time for it to come in. How can you relate it to all the things that we've discussed today? Self-responsibility is such a big thing. So I grow my own fruits and my own vegetables, and I consume them as often as I can. I learned that from my parents. They're in their mid-70s. They walk three miles a day. They still work full-time because they love purpose. Uh, but they, they live off the ground that they grow. And we're talking here in California. We're talking in the greater Los Angeles area. So we're not talking about a farmland by any means. I think we should all learn to grow our food. I think that we should all learn skill sets to fix our own things when they break. I think that harvesting isn't just in growing our own foods and preparing our own foods so that we save some money instead of always eating out. We can have a nice home-cooked meal. We could have fun making some incredible food. Recently, we made a chicken pot pie at home. Didn't turn out as good as I'd like, but nevertheless, it was a first run. <laughs> um, and, and so work, working on ourselves at a personal level, harvesting our own personal skills, our own personal development, growing our own food, being responsible for our own things when they break, uh, I think all these things are, are, are good things. I think good things come from all those things. Excellent words of wisdom. So in closing today's show, I'd like to just share with everyone and say there will be comments that you can leave below the video, and we would love to hear your questions um, about the show, maybe things that you'd like us to cover in a future show. So please be open to that and feel free to partake in that. And we'll continue our discussion on the next segment, so be sure to subscribe to our channel, and um, be on the lookout for our next edition and next segment. Thank you all for listening, and thank you, AG Leveraged, for your words of wisdom. Thank you, Don.